Good morning, first grade. All right, today we are going to work on author's purpose instead. So get out your AMI notebooks, and today you have to decide what was the author's purpose in what I read. Did he want to persuade us? Did he or she want to inform us? Or do they want to entertain us? So you have to listen carefully and decide. If it's just a story that's funny and there's not a whole lot of point to it, it's probably to entertain you. If they're giving you a lot of detail and information and facts about something, the author probably wants to inform you. If the author is telling you some things and he thinks he ends or she ends with, you should think the way I do or you should change your mind, then the author is probably trying to persuade you to think the way they're thinking. So let's listen. I've got a short one. A chicken begins its life inside an egg. Inside the egg, the baby chick has all the nutrition it needs. When it is big and strong enough, it pecks its way out of the egg. Then it eats grain and it drinks water. When it is old enough, it begins to lay eggs. So do you think the author was trying to persuade you to think the way it thinks about he or she thinks about chickens? Do you think the author was trying to inform you and teach you something about a chicken's life? Or do you think the author was trying to entertain you and tell you a funny, a silly, or a scary story about chickens? Go ahead and write your answer in your AMI notebook. All right, the author's purpose in this one was to inform you. It tells you um, where a chicken begins its life. It tells you what a baby chicken needs and it tells you how it gets out of its egg when it starts there. So if you put the author's purpose was to inform you, give your brain a kiss and your answer a smiley face. If not, we'll try again next time. I got one more short one because it's fun. Are you ready? Question, why does the flamingo stand on one leg with one leg up in the air? Answer, because it would fall if it stood with both legs in the air. Do you think the author was trying to persuade you to think the same way about flamingos? Do you think the author was trying to inform you about flamingos? Or was it just trying to entertain you with a silly joke? If you picked C, entertain you, you are exactly right. It was just a silly joke. Good job, guys. All right, we're going to read chapter six, Me and Santa. Now, yesterday when we left off, Junie B was trying to get the prize in the silver sparkly, or not silver, the yellow shiny box. The grandest prize ever, Lucille said. And to do that, she had to pull a purple jelly bean out of the bag. There was only one purple jelly bean. And when we ended, she thought she had found the jelly bean in her hand. She thought it felt purplish. So let's see what happens. It was purple. That's what I jumped up and down and all around, purple, purple, I got purple, I shouted. I'm getting the thrill of a lifetime. I'm getting the thrill of a lifetime. I skipped over to May and I smiled real big in her face. Then I skipped to the middle of the tables and I did a giant bow. Giant bows are very enjoyable, even when no one is actually clapping for you. After I stopped bowing, Lucille's daddy handed me the beautiful box. I pulled off the paper as fast as I could and then I lifted off its lid and I stared inside. Now, do you remember what you thought was in there? Let's see if you were right, if you predicted correctly. Hmm, I said very puzzled. It's um, a box of pink fur. I scratched my head. Um, I've always wanted a box of pink fur, possibly, I said. Lucille laughed real loud. Silly Junie B. Jones, it's not just a box of pink fur. Take it out so you can see what it really is, she said. Then, just as I was about to pick up, Lucille grabbed the pink fur and she held it up in front of me. And that is the last actual fun I had at the party. A bunny suit, see, it's a bunny suit, shouted Lucille. Junie B is going to be our party's very own Easter bunny. May laughed real loud. She's gonna be our dumb bunny, you mean? She called out, Junie B. Junie Jones is going to be our very own dumb bunny. Just then, the rest of the children began to laugh too. Lucille stamped her mad foot at them. Stop 
stop it, she said. Junie B is not going to be our dumb bunny. She's going to be our Easter bunny. This is the finest bunny costume money can buy. She held it out to me. Here, Junie B, put it on and show everyone how cute it is. She handed me the costume. I swallowed real hard. <laughs> yeah, only here's the problem, Lucille. I don't actually like costumes that much. Not even in Halloween, I said. Mostly I just like dressing up as Junie B. Jones and that's all. Lucille's whole mouth came open at once at the news. She put her hands over her ears. Oh no, do not tell me that Junie B. Jones, she said, you have to be the bunny. You have to. She ran to her daddy and pulled on his arm. Make her daddy. Make Junie B. Jones be the bunny. Make her, she yelled. Lucille's daddy rubbed his chin. Well, we certainly would like it if Junie B. was the bunny, he said. But we can't really make her Lucille. Lucille jumped up and down at me. You're going to ruin my whole party. There's Lucille and Junie with the bunny costume. You're gonna ruin my whole party, Junie B. Jones, she grouched. We hired an expensive photographer and everything. We're all supposed to get our pictures taken with you. My ears perked up a little at that news. Pictures, I said, kind of curious. Lucille nodded. Yes, pictures, she said back. The photographer has a scene set up for you in the flower garden. My ears perked up some more. A seat, I said. You mean like a saint to seat? Lucille jumped way high in the air. Yes, yes, exactly like a Santa seat, she said. The photographer is waiting for you. You're going to be a celebrity, Junie B. Will you do it, huh? Will you? I sat down in the grass to think about it. Lucille's daddy bent down next to me. You don't have to do this you, if you don't want to, Junie B, he said. But we do need you to get on with the party. So could you make up your mind, please? Do you want to be the bunny? Or do you want us to get someone else? Just then, Sheldon shot his hand in the air. I'll do it! I'll do it! He yelled real excited. I would love to have my picture taken with everyone. Me too, hollered Shirley. I would love to do that too. I looked at those two kind of curious. Hmm, well maybe I was wrong about this situation. Maybe being a famous bunny really was the thrill of a lifetime. I pulled the bunny suit closer to me, then very slow, I put one foot inside the costume, then the other foot, then zip, zip, snap, the daddy fastened me up, and bingo, I was a bunny. All right, that's the end of chapter six. Chapter seven is called Polite Rules. So we are almost to the end of this chapter book. We will get to finish it up this week before Easter so that you guys can celebrate your own Easter however you choose with your family, okay? Have a good rest of the week. We'll see you later.